So today let's give a little talk about Anchor. Now there is no white paper yet. Um, they've not released an MVP. You really have a team, and um, that is basically what we have. And um, always be any team and all that. So we don't really have much details about this person. So what are they seeking to do? They're seeking to bring a kind of system here. How do we bring a, a blockchain platform? And then also they bring a blockchain platform. How do we bring distributed cloud computing? And not only bring distributed cloud computing, distributed cloud computing that can actually run on the trusted hardware. Now a lot of us know what a blockchain is, kind of single source of truth. We are, okay, we can say this, what is in the data uh, in, in, in in the system of a is also in the system of b so because there is a there is a direct attestation of what is being entered into the ledger and then there is this replication of the already attested data to every party that is within the network that is basically what we know about blockchain as a, like a, as a database then we talk about the additional layers of building things like smart contracts and all that. So we already know that. So what about cloud computing? Simple. Cloud computing has to do with first, what is a cloud? Now, if we have different platforms like, um, okay, we have Microsoft Word, you have um, Excel, you have many of these platforms. When people can now access these platforms on the web we are referring it to cloud now you might not take it to be very very um it, it, it might not be very complex but in a simple nutshell it's basically the ability for individuals to assess computing power for specific purposes outside their own system so when we talk about cloud, we could have things like cloud storage. When you are able to store a piece of file or a group of files on a kind of company's server that is or system that is not yours. So cloud computing basically has to do with a form of computing where does not take place in your own system, but rather takes place in a hired service. So what they are seeking to bring, um, what is this? Okay, what they are seeking to bring is how do we make this class computing rather than put it on the various platforms like Amazon, um, and the other services there? Why not we make this system distributed? So, what they want to do, they don't just want to bring a kind of system where you can come and rent hardware or whatsoever. No, bringing a kind of blockchain system here. Like you talk about Bitcoin, you see the reports that Bitcoin consumes a lot of power and that the uh, power that Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin consumes for one transaction is, in, is enough to power like 10 houses in certain countries for just one transaction. And then uh, people are now asking, okay, Bitcoin is very slow um, and all that. So is this thing really um, sustainable and efficient? And if you look at the Bitcoin mining system, it's basically where every person is competing to be able to be the first person to mine a block. And what are they doing? They're just competing for hash, right? Now, what about if, if we change the way we do this system? Now, a very good example is, sorry, I, I take a lot of time in my review most times. A, a good example is Awif. So what is Awif seeking to do? Awif said, well, rather than for people to be competing against each other in order to um, perform a transaction, why don't we bring in a system where the competition is not based on who, who can bring the first block, but rather we are arriving, uh, we are arriving to consensus via data storage. So Anchor is bringing a system where we will be arriving to consensus by doing useful work. So 
there is a piece of work let's say uh, company A, company B, company uh, D maybe they are involved with artificial intelligence maybe they are involved with this computation maybe they are involved with this or maybe a blockchain company whatsoever that needs comp computing power maybe they are a kind of uh, maybe YouTube maybe they are involved with things like content delivery network or maybe they are involved with things like transcoding or transmitting or just whatsoever just things that require computing function so when you suppose these are the work now we have before us now rather than for us to be competing for it to mine a block we will now be competing pulling our our our, our resources together to make sure that we pro provide the adequate amount of computing power required for that system to actually come to pass so that is what the anchor network is doing bringing providing computing power and using such uh, 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 source as a consensus mechanism and then it will be on a trusted hardware now very simple let's talk about what is a trusted hardware a trusted hardware it's simply if this is a hardware and this is a hardware now how do we now distinguish that this hardware actually is trusted now maybe you don't understand the explanation i give let me make it very simple when you have your phone every single phone i don't know much about the phone but i try to know a little about phones every single phone has what we call an ime number now that means if maybe your phone was stolen or you misplaced it and you don't maybe there you don't want someone to actually get access to the phone and make use of it you and if you know about the mie number i am sorry i am e number you can see there are certain processes you could follow and you could block anybody from using the phone so the phone will be in the possession of the person but the person will not be will be able to use it now bring it to the area of trusted hardware we could now link this hardware which is the phone but in this case now systems computer systems we can now link these systems to the blockchain network that if it's any transaction that is not from this particular hardware is deemed unacceptable now that is something there is a blockchain platform, I don't know, um, Readverse, sorry, okay, Readverse. Readverse is a kind of platform that they are trying to, Readverse, is, am I getting this correct? Yeah, so Readverse is a kind of, is a, is a cyber security company that is bringing solutions that will help people harness the power of trusted execution environment in order to ensure security in the space. Now what that means is if you have if you have your wallet and you have some money on your phone in, in, in your, your phone has a wallet and you have some money there how do we there's a how do you say that transactions should occur from this phone and not only should they occur from this phone they should only occur from this location that is called trusted execution environment transactions are only to be executed from a trusted environment i've spoken a lot i've spoken about the proof of visual work uh the subject uh cloud computer system and then the other thing about this platform is what we call the seamless uh interface of oracle service so what, do, what that means is if you look at the internet for example everything is about data um i had a report that you have like I don't really know how true it is, but 13 million articles are being published every single hour. Is it every single day or something like that? But we already know it, we already know about the internet. Every single minute someone is actually posting something on Facebook. Every single minute someone is posting something on YouTube. Every single minute someone is liking, someone is commenting, someone is 
doing things, publishing an article, publishing a comment, and whatsoever. But when you look at smart contracts, or when you look at blockchain systems today, it sets the platforms that are designed to store data. The database of many blockchains are simply transactions that happened few years ago, many years ago and it's of no use to anybody. So how do we build an interface that will bring data into the blockchain? Now what are oracles? Our oracle simply oracle simply uh, refers to technologies or integrations that enable services to be able to import data where it would not have been possible. So it's like you you have like um like you have a USB stick. You can simply connect it to your system and then you can access what is it. So Oracle is like a kind of a connect a connecting bridge between this point A and point B. And then we talk about the multi chain structure supporting consumption. So what that simply means is that there is a big talk now and it's something you should pay attention to it's called the layer 2 blockchain systems now there is a huge talk around um, even though you have a even though you have a blockchain system if we go go about is it Spark Star ICO. If you Google about this platform, they promise to um, process 10 million transactions per second. 10 million, as you can see, 10 million transactions per second. Now, let's say that is possible. But one of the things I believe, and many other experts believe in this space, is that you cannot put everything in one blockchain. You cannot. So, if you look at Twitter, for example, Twitter, this is Twitter now, sorry, this is Twitter. If you look at Facebook, if you look at Google, Twitter processes, uh, Twitter handles over 140 million users per day. Facebook have over 1.4 billion users per day. And do you know how many likes happen? On a daily basis. Those are, these are social media platforms. What about YouTube? Do you know how many videos are being uploaded to YouTube every single day? Do you know how many people are watching videos? Can you look at concurrently? Those are just social and entertainment platforms. What about if you want to build banking infrastructure? Can you put everything on the blockchain? Okay, what about games? Multiplayer games. So when you look at the deal, okay, can you put insurance? Can you put transport? Can you put all these services on one blockchain? The answer is no. There has to be layer two solutions. There are two solutions. There are there are this, there are kind of, there are solutions that will provide scalability to the top layer to the base. Okay. This is lay, layer layer one. This is layer two. So you, if this this is the platform, you can build it on top of layer two. Why? So layer two is going to provide scalability to this platform you built, to this platform you just built now, and then this platform will inherit the security features of now. There is two. There is there is two steps. You have to either talk about sacrificing. Decentralization of scalability. So, in order to get the best of two words, scalability and decentralization, we have we need layer two solutions. So, this is your platform. Build it on layer two to get the scalability. While it's way inherit inherit the layer one security features. So that is basically what. Um, Multi, uh, the multi chain structure will be so there will be you you already know about the other solution like plasma and then 
the other layer to you know that so we don't really have a white paper for now and then you can basically look at the roadmap the roadmap as you can see here ends at july prototype release you know that and um you can look at who is behind the team you can shake them all if you want to join them you can join them yeah, you can upload your resume and then you can join them. They have a very good um, partners and all that. So some of the strategic investors who have new global capital, DHBC, BlockVC, Cosmos, okay, blockchain capital, LinkVC. So that is anchor chain in in nutshell. I hope you understand or you and you heard me very clearly because my mic. Most times I'm like, this is the mic every person is using. I'm using the the, the blue yeti mic, and I'm like, this is the mic. Maybe someone who is watching the video will give me some tutorials. So do have a very good day, guys. If you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and share this video with your friends. Thank you.